welcome back, or welcome for the first time to Books with Ryan. I am Ryan, and um, today I got tagged on something, so I get to do my first tag on Book 2, which I'm really excited. My first tag that I've actually been tagged in. I've done the new new BookTuber tag thing, but I did that without any tagging, um, so I don't know if that's against BookTube etiquette. Or whatever. But this is the first time I've been tagged to do something. I'm very excited. Uh, I was tagged by Bethann Berninga Sucklar. I hope that's how you say your last name, Bethann, because I watched the video on how to pronounce your name. Um, the first, the first name I know I got right. The second, your last name um, is a little more difficult, but I've been practicing because I've filmed this probably like ten times. I keep screwing things up. Um, but before I get into the book tag, I am wearing a Some Good News shirt. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, John Krasinski, who played Jim in The Office, the American office, um, produced a show once a week that had stories from around the world that were nice stories, um, good news stories. And my daughter, Noelia, made the final episode. Um, my parents had been watching the show, and they told us about it. And um, we had a video. My daughter was riding on her bike, and she fell it was her new balance bike and she fell and got up and said she was okay um which when i describe it like that does not sound as cute as it really was she was also wearing like a sky sky from paw patrol like a sky pj kind of thing with a cape and she had a mask on like a superhero mask and she was wearing a helmet <clears throat> she was wearing a helmet but um she was in the final episode so we were excited about that she was called Nar noelia carbonero carbonero is the name of it's the nickname of fans of Peñarol, the soccer team, the best soccer team from Uruguay, a team that I like. So, I am doing, I am doing the tag. This is the B tag from Beth Ann Berninga Suckler. And what I'm going to do is I watched Beth Ann do this um, earlier today, much earlier today. And, but I haven't really gone back to look at it, so I want it to be a little more spontaneous um, than if I had kind of researched it. I did know some of the stuff that was going to come up, so I do have a couple books here for one of the questions. Um, but let's get started. So there are the B tags. There were also an A tag. I'm sorry. I should probably say who started this because Beth Ann got it from somebody. Beth Ann got it from Jim at Jim's Books. And Beth Ann's um, book two pages, Beth Ann Berninga Sucklar. I'll, I'll link to it. I think I know how to link to pages now, so other people's um, channels, hopefully. Um, so I will do it now. Okie uh, dokie. Question number one B is for Bildungsroman. Bildungsroman. I took German. I should probably be able to pronounce that better. Do you have a favorite Bildungsroman or coming-of-age story? Do I have... Yes, I do. I remember what I was thinking of when I saw this question. Um, I've actually brought up this book before, but... Um, I mean, it's kind of a coming-age book. Um, the book's called The Purple Land. It's by William H. Hudson. William H. Hudson was born in Argentina... Um, but he moved to England, and his first book was called The Purple Land That England Lost. He uh, published it in 1885, and I have a copy of it, signed, the original one. Uh, but it was a failure until 1907 when it was um, republished as The Purple Land, No England Lost. And maybe that did better commercially in England, where he was living um, and where he died. So, actually, uh, if you live in England, you're near Hyde Park, there's a statue of a bird woman, and um, that's in honor of William H. Hudson. Um, but, basically, it follows this guy around, and um, this guy is getting married, or he, he's in love with this girl in Argentina, and they get married, but they do it without um, his... without his girlfriend's um father's permission so they're worried that he's going to be killed by the father and they run off to uruguay and 
the daughter, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the girlfriend, the fiance, wife, maybe? I can't even remember if they actually got married. They may have already gotten married. So um, at this point, they got married, but without permission. She stays in Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay, and he's going around Uruguay um, trying to collect some support um, for the marriage and to get some help. So this it's set around the time of um, some revolution in Uruguay, in the early 1800s, 1820s. It was written in 1885. Um, and he's just kind of traveling around the country, um, meeting new people, new, new people, kind of interacting with gauchos, which are cowboys in Uruguay, um, staying at different estancias. And I, I read it, should I have? I read the book um, one summer. And I got so into it that I bought a book of Uruguay. And I actually, just lucky that I had this in my desk. I, I used little post-it notes to, to record where he went. I'm not sure if you can see this because I closed my screen uh, with my, my view. Anyway, so I, I, this is a map of Uruguay. They started off in Buenos Aires, over here, over here. And they go to Montevideo here and then this is kind of him going on now some of the areas i think are incorrect um as far as where uh he was writing so they kind of did this big loop and then ended up back here uh it was a time of revolution though and he got into the blacks and the whites i'm sorry the red and the whites two different parties blancos and the roses mm. um, oh, i don't know i know german more than i know um spanish but I, I liked it. It really, he started out as kind of this colonialist um, British guy. And um, by the end of it, he really falls in love with the people of Uruguay. And kind of the, the conflict between Argentina and Brazil, which really happens in Uruguay because it's kind of the buffer country between them. It's tiny compared to those two countries. Um, and by the end of it, he is, is kind of on board with the Uruguayan people and says that they need to have their own, their own, uh, identity, essentially, which they already had, but, uh, um, Jorge Louis Borges says it's the greatest gaucho story of all time. I don't know if I've mispronounced names. If I did, I'm sorry. Um, so that was it. The Purple Land. Check it out. It's a really nice read. It's... Even though it's so old, I, it's old. So I said it was published in 1885. It, be, it became a success in 1907 when it was republished. Um, the 1885 issues are very hard to find. There are two volumes, and they combined them together in 1889, I think, or 1887. So the ones that stayed two separate volumes are hard to find. And then um, in 1907, it came back out, and it's referenced in this, um, the... Sun Also Rises, Ernest Hemingway's Sun Also Rises. So, I've, I've talked about that in a different video. If I knew how to link to those videos during the video, during this, I would, but I, I don't know how. Still, I still have no idea how to do that. All right, next one. Number two, B is for beach, and it says, be careful how you pronounce it. What would you recommend for a beach read? Well, when my wife and I got married, we went to Punta Cana, uh, Dominican Republic, and I got... Um, this book, which I wanted to read while we were there. It's the buy side. A Wall Street Trader's Tale of Spectacular Excess um, by Tony Duff. I've actually talked to Tony Duff on, on um, Twitter. He's approachable. He's responsive. It's about um, kind of a slide into some pretty negative stuff and drug use and probably depression and how it hurt his family. Um... You know, I was going to an island in the Caribbean, so I was like, oh, I'll read a rich, rich guy book. Um, but it was a little more depressing than that. So I read that at the beach. But what I'm excited to read at the beach, because we're finally going to the beach after like two years um, this summer, is Jaws. I finally got Jaws. Obviously, I've seen the movie. I talked to my dad about Jaws, and he says the book is better than the movie. Um, so I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm going to be excited to see how it affects me going in the water. I went to college in Connecticut, um, pretty close to where this kind of took place, or where, I think where it was supposed to take place. Or maybe that's where it was filmed, but I don't know. 
Um, but Jaws. Jaws is a beach read. I think everyone should read Jaws at the beach, and they should be scared, and they should understand that they're going into some other animal's environment, and to just be respectful of that, that you are not the apex predator you once were once you're in the ocean. But that's okay. Just be smart about it. And assume that the odds are in your favor. Number three, B is for best. What is the best book you've read this year so far? Shit. I don't... I don't know. Um, I read House of Leaves. I enjoyed that. I got that idea from Caroline um, Johnson of Caroline Johnson, <laughs> her channel. Um, I'd say the the read this year that has had the greatest impact was White Collar Crime by Edwin Sutherland. I also talk about this in a different video, but um, I found a really rare book. There's only probably two of. Um, one of them's in the Rare Books and Manuscripts collection, and the other one I bought from a guy who um, bought it in an estate sale. And I kind of rescued the book. And the book is significant for the community, the criminology and sociology community that cares about white collar crime. So I read both versions of the book. I read the uh, censored version from 1949. Um, Sutherland died in 1950. He had a seizure, a stroke, and, and hit his head on the sidewalk and died on the way to the hospital. He was 67 years old. But I read the um, censored version from 49, and that book was censored until 1983 uh, when Yale University Press um, published the uncut version of the book. The really cool carbon copy typescript I have from 1962 is very likely the actual physical book that was used by Yale to produce the uncut version. So I read both versions of it, and the uncut version is much better. Um, and that got me involved with a number of criminology professors across the United States and North America and Europe. Um, and they found it so interesting that I had found this book that's significant, um, that I had to, they asked me to write an essay for a newsletter for their association, the Association of, or the Society of uh, American Criminology, that, um, I did that. So that's going to come out, I think, this month or next month. But um, that's had the most impact. It's also a really good book. It's an interesting topic. It's timely. Um, and it's a critical, iconic piece that is from the father of criminology, especially white-collar crime um, in the United States. White-collar criminology in the United States. Edwin Sutherland. Um, let's see. Number four, B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? I do. I there, There's probably a few bookstores that I think of that I enjoy going to, but some of them have closed down. One of them definitely closed down, um, and it was too bad. It was a really nice, really nice shop, very close to me. Um, there's also a second-hand bookstore. It's, it's a little less, like, books, like, cottagey kind of feel and more of just a big bookstore, but it's all second-hand. And I found some good good books reasonably priced there very good books very reasonably priced there um but i think my favorite bookstore is on the way out of washington dc out of on the way out of washington dc towards cambridge maryland it's right before you get to cambridge maryland and it's called unicorn oh my nose is she um it's called unicorn books and the guy had been closed for a while i think he's months um, but the last time I was in Cambridge, I was visiting my my family, and um, I, we stopped by Unicorn Books on the way home, and the guy was open again. So I want to go visit it when I have more time. It's one of those those bookshops that have tons of books, and you could spend a long time. He has this one wing that has like old, really nice antique, you know, 1600, 1700, 1800 books, um, first edition, signed stuff. And, and that's the room I really like to be in. But there's also just a lot of other options there and things you can dig around for. And it's a nice, cool, small bookshop. So Unicorn Books, um, it's in between East and Maryland and Cambridge, Maryland. And I love that place. There are nice places in D.C. too. Second Story Books is a good one. A really good one. Really big. And they can um, appraise books. But that's probably my favorite small place that I've been to. 
Let's see here. B for banned books. Is there any book you think should be banned? You know, I I don't think uh, it's, there's another um, a little bit more here. Ash at Bookish Realm has a video about most challenging or banned books in the past decade on the ALA ban and cancel list. Um, I haven't watched that, but I I think. Um, to me, generally, books should not be banned. Um, there's certainly content that I would find offensive. I mean, there's certainly illegal content. <clears throat> I, I wouldn't want to have books that have any kind of abuse of children. And I'm not talking about like part of a storyline, but actual abuse of, of children as a subject matter. And I'm sure there's creepy underground shit that is on a dark web that has that kind of stuff. That I'd, I'd be against that. But as far as like objectionable material because it, it doesn't jive with what people, you know, agree with or believe, I think that's if you don't like that kind of book, don't read it. Um, if you don't want your kids to read it, don't get it for them or monitor what they have as much as you can. But you know, as far as like restricting somebody else from being able to read about it just because you don't like it, I, I'm not for that. Um, so should there be banned books? I'm not entirely sure who's banning these books. I'm guessing it's, in some cases, um, school systems. Maybe in some cases there's countries involved. Um, I'm just, you know, it's, I don't really have a say in it because I'm not banning or freeing books, but I, I wouldn't be banning books unless there's some illegal content. Illegal and um, offensive to the general population. B is for Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible, and what trigger warnings do you think it should have? Ah, uh, this is a hard one. So I'm Christian. I I don't read enough of the Bible. I have Bibles. Um, I don't read enough of the Bible to have a favorite that is like a go-to book of the Bible. I know that if there's anything that has trigger warnings, I think it would be Revelations. <laughs> Revelations should be triggering you quite a bit when you start getting into it, but... Um, you know, as far as, like, stories, I mean, there's, there are stories that I think you appreciate as an adult, and stories that you remember as a child, and they're not necessarily the same value to you when you're, um, at those different levels, I mean, there's stories that just appeal to little kids, there's little books written about them, um, that we've all, you know, uh, Noah's Ark, and Daniel and the Lion's Den, <clears throat> but, for an adult, there's there's probably books that you use more in your everyday life or apply more to what you see as an adult or what you have to deal with as an adult. And I just, I'm not well-versed enough to pick one out. I mean, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Max. I, I mean, that may be like a go-to, but I don't get more specific than that. I just can't. I should. I should be better at that. Um, number seven is B is for bookshelf. Show me your bookshelf and shelves. Okay, I'll do that after number eight. Number eight is B is for Brazil. Uh, pa, Paulo, pa, Paulo Carlos. I wish I knew Portuguese. Um, the Alchemist has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any of his or any of any of his other stuff? I, I, um, that's not what it exactly says. I'll post the, the questions in the bottom of, in the about area. Um, and if so, what did you think of his books? I haven't read The Alchemist. I haven't read any of his books. Um, there are, there are a lot of, there are a lot of comic book people in Brazil. Um, and in South America, especially Brazil, but um, more than I would have expected. There are authors, um, writers there, but there's also a lot of artists in Brazil. Um, so I'm more familiar, although I don't know their names, because I don't know any names. I'm the worst at names. Um, I'm probably more familiar with the work of comic book artists. I, I read a lot of DC comics, um, you know, Boom and uh, Image and Dark Horse. Uh, those are all publishers, but mostly DC, vintage, or vintage, um, 
And why is it that? Um, so there are a number of artists that do that. There's also a Uruguayan artist, uh, Matias, who is a Peñarol fan, and he illustrated a book, um, a series called Coda. And the main character in the series, his jersey, or his shirt, is based off of the Peñarol jersey, which I thought was really cool. I didn't know that until we started interacting on, on um, Twitter. All right, so number seven was B is for bookshelf. Show me your bookshelf bookshelves. And I'm going to try to do this. I, I'm plugged into a computer, but what I'm going to try to do is pick up the camera so I can move it around a little bit and then have the screen set up so I can just see what I'm doing. I wonder if I can make this into a full screen. I don't know how to do that. View? No. Well, I'm not going to waste time trying to figure that out. Oh, nope, that's not it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the, the um, camera and then try to move it around so I can kind of show you. Oh, it is not very long, the cable. This is my study. Oh, no, it might be long enough, but I'm going to have to pull it back into itself to untie the knot. All right, so this is my study. Um, that's kind of... It's actually where I usually work. That's my my work chair. Um, there's my clock from, uh, it's a wave radio from when I was in high school, or when I was in college. And I have a banjo back there. That's kind of like a little sports corner. There's a Nashville Predators banner that I got in Carolina, hung from the rafters, some hockey stuff. Um, I guess I can show my desk. It's, it's a little messy. This is the setup. There's a roll top desk. There's a model ship. Some coins. Um, Bill Monroe thing. Bill Monroe poster signed. A sword. It was in the Coast Guard. Um, but this is these are my bookshelves. So over in the corner, the this is. I hope you're not getting sick because I can definitely see that's moving around quite a bit. Uh, over in the corner is the comics. That's all. That that bookshelf is comics. All the way down, it's um, three shelves on on two side, two sets of three shelves, three three shelves side by side with three other shelves. That sounds stupid. I don't know if that made sense, but um, the next area, the the furthest left of the tall bookshelf, is uh, that's all business, finance, economics, um, different kinds. So. I have them kind of grouped in certain ways. There's, you know, I think you can see the little banjo player guys sitting on there. Um, the one really in the middle with a frog looking banjo player. Um, those are like behavioral economics books. Um, below that is kind of the uh, confessional kind of book. That's people that had gotten in trouble with the law and wrote about it or were insiders and talked about that. Uh, then there's more of the accounting stuff at the bottom. Uh, top's kind of the crypto stuff, and then at the very top is public affairs stuff. That's my that's my specialty. Um, that's what I do for a living. Uh, and that's why I got my master's degree in. Uh, next over the middle the middle bookshelf is at the very top. Um, that is music stuff, banjo stuff, bluegrass stuff. Um, the next one down is um, securities, like uh, stocks and bonds related things, and the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, below that is more uh, regulatory stuff and enforcement kind of stuff involving other agencies like the FDIC and the Federal Reserve and um, Treasury. And below that is are my two VIB books. These are my very very important books shelves and that's where I have the Codex Serfinianus, I have stuff signed by President Bush, I have a book that I helped edit, I have a book that I'm a fictional character in um, that, uh, that I really enjoyed. I have a couple of first editions of John le Carre, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and Smiley's People signed. Um, that's where I have the uh, first edition signed copy of Purple Lamb that England lost, and I also have my great grandfather's um, Poe book 
And then below that, there's a guy named Akira Sumara, who uh, was a, is, I believe he's still alive, um, a businessman in Japan who liked Dixie Jazz and also uh, loved the banjo, uh, especially jazz banjo. And he was a, at least a multimillionaire, and he collected many things, but he had this huge collection of banjos, um, which were, some of them were extremely rare. We're talking $250,000 a piece of banjos, and he had thousands of them. So uh, he had his collections made into books, and one of the books is called Banjos. It's from 1984, I think. Uh, there's one from 1993, or there's two from 1993. One of them's called the one, 1001 Banjos, a smart collection, and that's considered banjo porn. It's it's some of the coolest looking banjos. I've actually had a professional banjo player reach out to me to see if his banjo's in there because the the serial numbers are included, and his his was. So um, I I collected all of the Akira Sumara stuff that I could, and he eventually reached out to me and sent me. Um, a letter, a nice letter, and some pictures from that are actually used in the book. So that's cool. Um, eventually, he was, uh, I think, convicted of some white collar crimes and lost his entire collection, uh, chunks of his entire collection, and some of that collection was destroyed. It was left in a rice paddy somewhere in a barn, and um, eventually was overcome by the elements and kind of got crushed underneath the weight of other banjos. So it's sad. The, the collection doesn't really exist anymore. There are parts of it that exist, but a lot of it will never be seen again. Um, and then on the top of the books that are vertical, or the horizontal ones, the two bottom ones are Toshin books. One's on the most beautiful libraries in the world. And then the other one's a Bosch um, Complete Works book. Above that is the large banjo book. It's 20 pounds. Um, and then above that is the White Collar Crime book, which I've, I've also done a video about. Um, that's in a clamshell box I had made specifically for that book. That's the really important, that's the one that there's only two of. And it's probably my most important book, I think. Um, then below that, uh, there's some other stuff over there. Some old, um, I went to the Coast Guard Academy, but there's some really old uh, yearbooks from before it was called the Coast Guard. It was called the Revenue Cutter Service. And the school was called the School of Instruction. So I have some yearbooks from that time period. It's 1908. Then below that, there's Entertainment and Sports. And then below that, there's some yearbooks from the Academy and some Maritime stuff and Coast Guard stuff. And then over there, we have kind of biography stuff and historical things up here. Down below that, it's kind of miscellaneous. Below that is all my Ted Bell books and then some Don Winslow books. Ted Bell is a friend, and he's the author that wrote me as a... It's spy thrillers. He wrote me as a... Uh, uh, character in two of the books he wrote i was in the phantom and patriot and then my ship that i was on was in warriors so cool and then below that is um john le carre books that's where the ship is that's the u.s coast guard Cutter eagle um those are john le carre books and then some other books on spies and then below that is kind of um uh, what am i pointing at just other books um some Dan Simmons books, some Neil Stevenson books. That's where Jaws goes. American Psycho, which is the most fucked up book. American Psycho is crazy. If you watch the movie, the stuff that they talk about in the book is so disturbing, you would never be able to do that in a movie, a mainstream movie. Maybe some kind of like torture smut stuff that is underground, but you would never be able to do that mainstream. So as, as weird as that book was, or as, as the movie was, the book is even crazier. Uh, and then below that, there is um, just reference stuff, some travel things. Below that, there's some self-help stuff, improvement, mental health stuff, uh, religious stuff, and then below that is more kind of random stuff, but also some more military or some more uh, maritime stuff. Lots of stuff, and that's that's it, I think. And here, there's my ship. That's the ship I was on. That's like U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Vigorous. Uh, that was a present. Last Christmas, and it's it's cool. It's it's very detailed. There's a, you can actually, well, I mean, I'll be able. To, the room that I used to live in, the state room, is in there somewhere. It's 210 feet. So that's it for. Let's see if I can get this hooked up without it being. That was surprisingly easy. 
um, that was it. That's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, so I'm sorry about that. But you got to see a bunch of the books, and eventually I do a book a book shelf tour if you want that. Um, there are some really cool books in there that I really want to show off, um, but I need somebody to ask for it. So, thank you for tagging me, Beth Ann. I will tag Caroline Johnson. Um, because it's the only other person I've interacted with, <laughs> interacted with on BookTube regularly. Um, and who else? She's got really, she talks about horror and thrillers. And I really like her, her picks. That's why I started reading House of Leaves. Um, well, that's who I'll tag. So I guess I have to let her know I tagged her. Um, but thanks for joining me today. I, it was a little bit longer than I want it to be, but you know, you got some backstory on stuff and read Jaws at the beach. Uh, I hope you come back. I have 28 followers, 28 subscribers, and i um, going to try to figure out how to edit these videos this weekend so <laughs> I can start cutting some of these videos down and actually making them a little bit nicer. But this may be the last or second to last video that's pretty rough. So thank you for enduring um, the rough stuff, and I hope you come back. Let me know if you want me to cover anything, um, if you want to be tagged. I can do that. Now I have the power of tagging. And Beth Ann, thank you for tagging me. Really appreciate it. And if you want to learn about bees, go to Beth Ann's uh, videos. I want to read Buzz now because she's made me convinced that bees are really I knew that bees were cool. Um, but I, I want to read a little more about them because they're important. So thanks a lot. Talk to you later.